Hello and welcome to this week's Force.comcast episode where we're going to build our first uh, lightning component and we're going to put it on our lightning app. So what I've done is I've put together a new lightning component, a uh, lightning application called account overview and uh, in this application uh, I have a single uh, component listed which is called account list and I've got some styles and things. So let's go through what's in the application that we've defined. Um, at the top, we're using the lightning require tag. And um, what this is allowing us to do is require um, a CSS file from um, a static resource that we've got, which is just the Salesforce one bootstrap. Um, you can find this on GitHub from the Salesforce Foundation. Um, and all it does is it provides a very nice way of uh, making the uh, bootstrap theme look like uh, Salesforce's one, uh, Salesforce one theme, and it includes things like cards in it. Uh, underneath that, all we're doing is we're creating a div, which is going to give us a column of width uh, 4 out of 12, so a third of the page, um, and we're going to put an account list component in it. So that's all we've got in our application. Um, I've put the style at the top here in the application because I want it to be shared across all of the different components we're going to create. Um, I've added a bit of a style on the uh, column here that's going to have a uh, height um, set and allow us to have a scroll bar on the side um, and some padding. Um, but really, all of the work here is in the account list component. So if I uh, update the preview and I can show you what that looks like, um, all that's created for us is a component here on the page which lists our accounts. Um, and as you can see, it's got a nice Salesforce One bootstrap theme. So let's go through that component in details uh, in detail and see what we've got there. So, <coughs> excuse me, the two parts that we've created for this component are first of all. Um, a component uh, layout with a the markup there, and then we've got a client side controller. We're also using um, an Apex controller to retrieve the data, and we'll go through how we use that in a minute. Um, but you can see it's referenced here as the account list or a controller. So that just tells the component and tells the Lightning framework that the Apex controller we want to use is that controller, um, and we'll, as I say, go through the controller and its details in a second. First thing we define is an aura attribute called accounts, and that's going to hold a list of account objects, um, and they're going to be the accounts we're going to display in our list. We've then got a div which um, is going to set the context to be an account for us, and this is all Salesforce One Bootstrap work here. Um, and the first thing we're going to do, um, that really uses the Lightning Framework again, is have an aura iteration tag, um, and you can see here where they match up. Um, and it's going to loop through the accounts. So we use um, the v.accounts uh, binding to bind to the accounts attribute here. And for each one of the accounts, we're going to have a variable called ACK. And this is similar to um, the Apex repeat tag that you've probably used before. Now, within this, we're going to produce many different cards. So Salesforce One has the idea of a card for the mobile application. Um, and the Salesforce One Bootstrap provides that um, for us. So we're just going to produce a little card. And the heading is going to be an output text, so we're using a UI output text component here. And that is going to have for us the account name. So again, we're binding to the ACK variable, which we've set here. And we're going to get the name from it, so just the standard account name. And similarly, we're going to have the description. Um, and we're going to have that in the card detail in another output text. The rest of the markup, as I mentioned, is just styling, um, so you can look through that in your you know, at your own leisure and uh, go and have a look at the GitHub project. But all we've done here is a very simple component markup that's just going to display um, a list of accounts by iterating over them. Okay, and it's using that aura attribute. So how is that aura attribute set? So if we go into the client side controller, which is our account list controller, what we've got here is some function called do init. So when's that called? So if we go back onto our account list component, You'll see here we've got an aura handler. Now I didn't mention this the first time um, because I wanted to go through the kind of rendering markup. What the aura handler here is doing is it is um, using the init event on this, which references this component. And when the init event event happens on this component, it's then going to call this action in the controller. And the C here references the client side controller. So when we go into the controller, it's going to call the do init method, which we've defined here as a JavaScript function. It takes in the component that we're working with. And what we're going to do is we're going to define an action. Now, an action is the way in which um, you can communicate to and from Apex. So we're going to 
use the component and get c dot get accounts. So that uses the that says we're going to get the get accounts method uh, from the Apex controller associated to our component. So we'll have a look at that method in a second. And all we're going to do is on that action, we're going to set the callback function to be here, and it's going to respond with some state. Um, we're going to log out the response, but if the state is success, we're then going to set the accounts list on our view on the component to be the return value from our response, and then we're going to enqueue the action. So the dollar $A variable is for the aura context, and um, so similar to you might use dollar $J for jQuery for the global uh, jQuery uh, variable, you use dollar $A for the global aura variable within um, uh, JavaScript and within Lightning. And then what we do is where we're saying v dot accounts uh, to the response get value, we're setting that list of accounts. We enqueue the action because the way in which uh, Lightning works is you enqueue a series of actions and it fires them off in one bunch. So one of the problems with using um, JavaScript methods like this is if you're on a mobile device like Salesforce One um, and you're on a, a cellular connection or a 3G connection, um, your data is very limited. So what you want to do is you want to make um, as few a number of round trips as possible. So what Lightning does is you enqueue the actions, it bundles them up together and sends them off in bunches so that um, it's more efficient. So let's have a look at the get accounts method we were just discussing. So on this account list controller here, we have um, just a normal class definition, but in the method definition here, we mark it as aura enabled and it's static and we're returning a list of accounts, there's our method, and we just return a straight list. So Salesforce is doing the serialization again, very similar to how it does it um, when creating uh, Apex REST methods, and how it just serializes that for us, um, and in JavaScript remoting. So it's very, very quick and easy, um, and it's just a very simple method that just does a query and returns them all for us. So when we put all of that together, the controller makes the call to that method, gets the uh, accounts in the return value, sets that to be the accounts um, handler here, uh, account attribute here, sorry. The accounts attribute is then iterated over and we display all the accounts in our list. And then that is displayed on our app in that component. So when we look at the component, it goes away. When it initializes, it retrieves all of the accounts for us and displays them nicely for us to just scroll up and down in. And that is our very first Lightning component. So in next week's video, we're going to create a new component that goes alongside here um, and allows us to create a task. And then we're going to look at creating a series of other components, one to display a graph for us down here uh, from the Analytics API, and one to display a custom uh, visualization here for us. And then we're going to tie them all together in our final video using events so that when you select an account here, it will then allow you to create a task against that account here. It will retrieve the same report but filtering by that account and then it will also allow you to display the custom visualization for the particular account you're looking at. So I hope you've enjoyed this video and please subscribe on the YouTube channel for more videos as they come.